the voice of the Lord saying, Who shall I send? Who shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, Lord, here I am. Who shall I send? that your sin is a stained garment against God. It's like if uh, if you jump in the nasty Gulf of Mexico and you have a dirty shirt, you got to wear a new shirt. God wants to give you a new shirt. A new shirt where you have a new heart. He wants to give you a new life, which is significance of a new shirt. And he wants to give you a new heart, which is the spirit of God inside of you. No longer will you be the same. The Bible says in second, this is how, if you say you belong to God, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.20 that now you will be a new creature in Christ. The Bible says that now you will have the mind of Christ. The Bible says greater is he who lives inside of you than the one that is in the world. The Bible says that we do not have physical weapons like an AR-15, like a nuclear missile, like a submarine ship, like, a, like the ISIS group, like, a, like the whole U.S. military, like Navy SEALs. We don't have physical weapons in this fight we have spiritual weapons to break down strongholds of the mind because the mind creates sin the mind creates the lust of the eyes the lust of the flesh and the pride of possessions and god doesn't care if you wear a cross around your chest or you call yourself a fan club of a denomination that you're a part of. God doesn't care if you pray to St. Anthony on Sunday and the local priest, but you keep living the same. God wants to resurrect you. God wants to resurrect you in the name of Jesus. It's time for a resurrection in your life. How many of you know that God raised up the dead? God only, Jesus only raised up like three dead men, sorry. God raised up a dead boy, God raised up a dead girl, and God raised up a dead man. But now he wants to raise you up. Whenever you're dead in your sin, you're dead, and God wants to risk, lift you up from the grave and be resurrected with Christ. Turn to him. Where will you spend eternity? Where will you spend eternity? Will you accept Jesus Christ in your life today and follow after him? Where will you spend eternity? Where will you spend eternity? This is serious. People don't, people say that God is not real, but they believe that the devil's real. Say, man, the devil's after me again. But they, get, they take no personal responsibility. You cannot do this war by yourself. You need the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that the same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead will live inside of you. The Bible says do not resist the spirit of God. The Bible says do not grieve the spirit of God. The Bible says do not quench the spirit of God. Do not grieve, test, resist, or quench the spirit of God. Do not grieve the spirit of God means that whatever makes God sad, you do it anyway. Do not test the spirit of God means that you see how much you can continue living your life before, before God still redeems you and forgives you and lets you live in freedom in your sin. Do not resist the Spirit of God means that you already know what God doesn't want you to do, but you keep doing it. And do not quench the Spirit of God. Don't believe that God isn't the God of impossible. Don't, be, don't believe that God can't change your situation around it. Don't believe that God doesn't have power to put his power inside of people and cast out devils and heal the sick and raise up new people for his kingdom. That's how the Bible says, do not grieve, test, resist, or quench the Spirit of God. For God is calling you. Jesus said, if you dine with him, he will dine with you. 
If you dine with him, he will dine with you. He wants to dine with you. He, you'll be conformed, but my friends, you won't be the same person anymore. Because the Bible says that many will fall away from the Lord. That's why the Lutheran church, now they're marrying gay people. My friends, the Bible specifically states in Galatians 5 that the sexual immoral, the idolaters, the covet people, the people that steal, the liars, they will not in inherit the kingdom of God. The Bible says in, in Romans 1, because men did not seem, even though they knew about God, they did not want to seek after God. So they, they turn to they turned to self-pleasures where men got with men and women got with women. And because they kept doing these things, God turned their mind over to reprobate minds. My friends, the more that you sin, there is a consequence. You become desensitized to the things of God. You'll find yourself 30 days without prayer. Then you only uh, uh, visit the Lord on, on Easter. Before you know it, you're a dead Christian. You sought away from the Lord because you God loves you so much he'll let you seek for what you love that's why Jesus said where your treasure is that's where your heart is so the devil the Bible says he shoots arrows at you Fortnite, marijuana sex job car too busy so you're so busy you're so invested in other things that you don't have time for the Lord and you, you know how you change it today if you haven't worked out, you know how you change it? You show up at the gym. You let go of the sin. You let go of the people. The Bible says, don't be a friend of the world or love anything in it. If you keep having the five same friends around, you'll think just like them. By comparison and by fellowship, you'll be just like them. You'll love what they love. You'll support them. You'll get their back. You'll, be, you'll do whatever they do. You'll have their back. That's why some family members will not be your friends anymore. For Jesus said, who are my brother and my, my, my who's my mother and my, and my brother, but the ones that do God's will. Because Jesus' mother and his disciples were waiting outside the apartment. And Jesus said, I don't have time for those. He spent time with others that were trying to listen to him. Because Jesus said that he didn't come for the righteous, but for the lost. And today, if you're willing to come back, make a U-turn back to God. Let go of the bars. Let go of the alcohol. God will deliver you of every inch of alcohol. You don't need that in your life. You don't need the wrong partners in your life. You don't need people that are just going to use you in your life. But you got to decide today. The Bible says that today is the day of salvation. Seek for God while you still can. Today is the day of salvation. Jesus said, remember your first love or I will remove your lampstand from you. He said, consider how far you have fallen. Hold fast to what you still have and let nobody take your crown from you. Let nobody take your crown from you. I am coming soon. I am coming soon. Jesus wrote seven letters in Revelation and the only, the only letter that he had nothing bad to say was about the church of Philadelphia. These, these churches, they don't exist anymore. But I believe that it's Africa. This is what God wrote to Africa. He said, Africa, I love your perseverance and I see your persecution, Africa. I have nothing bad to say about you, Africa. But I will give you this. Hold fast to your crown, Africa, and let nobody take it from you. But I'm telling you this, that America by no means is Philadelphia. America is the church of Laodicea. And Jesus said this, I see you, America. You say that you have works. You say that you're rich, but really you're poor and miserable. I'd rather you be hot or cold. If you're lukewarm, I will spew you out of my mouth. That's how the Bible says that Jesus will come like a thief in the night. One, one girl will be walking down the street, the other one with her, but one will be taken and one will be left. But if both of you are walking in the same bar, you guys will be left. I'm not here to tell you this. This means that my cousin, she will stay because she doesn't want to seek for the Lord. She wants to seek for her job and money and never wants to hear about the things of God. But I'll be with my cousin in the same house 
and because I've denied myself and because I want to seek for the crown of glory that you get to toss and be behold in front of the feet of Jesus Christ, then glory to God, I am awaiting that day. That day will come like a thief to many and they will not expect. The Bible says as soon as that day comes, it will cost $100 for a loaf of bread. You won't even be able to afford a flauta or a taco in those days. The Bible says woe to pregnant women in those days because God will create famine. God will create World War III. Many Generation Z, you'll be forced into war. I don't know how you're going to do it, but you better learn to eat dirt while you're in basic boot camp because World War III is coming soon. You better learn to not love the, the lusts and the cravings of this world. What are you going to do when your electricity is gone? What are you going to do when your gas is gone? What are you going to do when the food is decreased? What are you going to do? God is going to allow these things because th those are the judgments of God. Jesus will open up the scroll and these things will start to happen. It's not a fairy tale. The Bible is the only book that talks about these things that will happen in the future. The United Nations is already set up. And Barack Obama and Joe Biden are very lawless and rebellious. They, they go against the rules of God. I believe in equality because Do Dr. Martin Luther King and his family to this day, they're devout Christians. And D Dr. Martin Luther King, he stood up for equality to remove demonic slavery. But my friends, whenever equality, when, whenever equality becomes division against God's ordinances and rebellion against God, it's no longer equality but now it's distortion. So that's what the political powers have done. They've distorted what equality means. Equality doesn't mean to live in lawlessness, but equality means to have freedom in Jesus Christ. And God will bless you whenever you, whenever you uphold what he's doing, what he says in the word. That's why Louisiana just put the 10 commandments back in the schools.